This place makes the Bermuda Triangle look like a kiddie pool. They say out here is where the ocean burns. We're here, right where you paid me to bring you. Question is, why? I'm looking for a car. Look out, ladies. <laughs> Major's fitting to get funky. One of the things about this movie is that your character is, in, is in, at first embarrassed by Larry the Cable Guy's character because you want him to change around other people. And But the theme of the movie becomes be yourself. You got to be yourself throughout the movie. Was there a time in your both your lives when you first started off your careers in this business where someone wanted you to change and be someone you were not to please other people? Well, when I first came to America, I did start changing because I was doing stand-up. I did start changing stuff and trying to use slightly more American words to, to get people in. Then people said, no, don't. Just make it, just use, use words like bloke. Right. Because people can work out what bloke is. Right. Yeah. You know, if you, I assume the intelligence of the audience now. And, uh, you know. That, that they can work out bloke. Yeah. If you say, this bloke came into the room, they don't go, what does that mean? We must leave now. <laughs> a bloke is coming. Surely that's a Martian terrorist. <laughs> or, or, even a communist. No, what about you? Did anyone ever try to change you when you first were, like, mold you into somebody you weren't at, at first? Uh, people wanted me to be Luke, and um, I couldn't do that. <laughs> I had to be myself. Um, I don't think there was, no, I think the fact that we, um, you know, the first movie that we did, we kind of did together. Um, yeah, and uh, so. I think that I started to get work off of that movie, so people weren't trying to change me into something uh, different. How'd you like to come and see the world with me? You mean it? There's a, great, there's a great reference in the movie where uh, obviously the, the dents in your truck mean something personal to you, but you know in real life when people look at a dent, they don't really understand it. They think that people should buff it out and not have the dent in their car. And you, your character kind of goes into that realm as well. Is there something in your life that you could also like you know reference that to as well, where you think like there's a dent maybe somewhere in your life, but that personal to you, but other people wouldn't understand it. Oh boy. Look I'm, I'm like getting too deep here. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't know that we were be Disney Pixar. <laughs> Well, uh, 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 I, I equate, well, what I equate the dent, what Mater is talking about with the dents that he's got is every dent that Mater has in his body has come from a certain situation that he's had throughout his life. Right. And he does not want to get rid of that. As ugly as those dents may be, they are a memory in his life and they are things that have shaped his life. And he wants to remember those because that's, that's, that's what he does. And that, that's, that's true, too. I mean, every, every scar I have or everything, it's, it's from my whole life right. growing up. And I wouldn't want to change any of those things, you know, because I would, they're all memories. And even though at the time it might have been a bad memory, the older you get, you look at it, now it's a good memory. You know, you learned a lot from that dent. Right. I agree. That is a wise word. <laughs> I am, my, um, I, I, I think that a lot in, in terms of, how, of my kids and how to talk to them about life and... And that it is, and more and more, it seems to me that it is. It, it's the sort of failures, both in your personal life and in your professional life, the things that go wrong, that are as important, if not more important, to your understanding of the world, and uh, as the things that go right. And and you shouldn't be scared of things going wrong because we all fail. We all have to fail, and right. it's all inevitable that we will fail just as much as as we hope we will succeed. But 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 not to be scared of failure is, I think, a really good message to give give kids. Very cool. Well, congratulations <laughs> to you guys. That was good. <laughs> I mean, that was good. Larry's actually crying. <laughs> the World Grand Prix. Three races, two continents, but only one winner. Ciao. There's an American liaison under deep cover. No more origato. These Americans are clearly master spies. Oh, you've got to be joking. Now, you guys have a huge responsibility here. This movie is, I mean, millions of kids are going to see this. I mean, it's for the first, everyone saw the first one. I mean, this is a huge franchise. It's a Pixar film. Do you ever feel responsible? Like, you know, kids are going to watch this movie multiple times. Do you ever feel like a pressure? Like, am I, like, am I going to influence how a child grows up by them watching a film like this? Like, is that ever something that crosses your mind? Probably so. Hopefully, we can, you can influence them in a good way and me in a, in a different way. <laughs> right. Not to tell anything what goes on. But. Do you ever feel that pressure, though? Like, when you're making a, making a kid's film? Uh, maybe not pressure, but you are aware that, you know, kids, uh, 
you know, if I love a movie, maybe I'll see it twice, you know, maybe like a third time, like years later on cable. But for a kid, I mean, they haven't even begun to see it till they've seen it 50 times. Right. So, um, yeah, you, you know that they're really going to absorb the movie. And um, I think with Pixar, it's we don't have to feel the pressure because Pixar always seems to deliver on, you know, telling a good story with, um, you know, not like a heavy-handed message, but sort of a nice, you know, uh, idea behind it. Right. It's John Lasseter, you know, of Pixar. It's a big, it's a huge part of Pixar. I mean, you know, helped drive animation into this, into this place, and so yeah, and his his message, you know, it's a family. He's a family man. And his, his films have a good message. Toy Story is, is a good, positive message. So you, you don't have to worry so much. It's not, there's, there's no one, yeah. you know, no evil presence lurking in the background of Pixar. Yeah. They always seem to be positive <laughs> yeah. people. We've been to their offices, and they're cool offices. Can I go? Can you guys, can I go with you guys next time? No. All right. Oh, come on. No, your tie's weird. <laughs> the, the, the tie's weird. You can't see his tie. It's, no, it's, it's an awesome a good tie. It's, it's a great tie. tie. All right. It's Eddie. But it is. It wouldn't get you in a picture. All right. Actually, it might get you in a picture. It might get you. All right. <laughs> Lightning McQueen cannot win the race. Instead of saying ka-chow, he's gonna go kaboom! McQueen needs your help, Mater. You ready? Is the Pope Mobile Catholic? No one can stop us. Friendships can be dangerous in our line of work, Mater. Emily, uh, your character in the film is immediately thrown into a situation that she doesn't think she's ready for. Uh, yes. yeah, her character, and the same with you. You're, you're thrown into situations that you don't think you're prepared to do. Um, could you equate that to your real life, where like there's a moment where you, you felt like someone threw you into a moment that you didn't think you're prepared for, but you succeeded? I was once asked to go and do a talk on Buddhist um, <laughs> <laughs> imagery, uh, fire gods and imagery in Howl's Moving Castle, another Disney right. um, product, which was, um, they, 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 I did a voice for Howl's Miyazaki, Moving Castle, right? the Miyazaki yeah. film. And this museum in, in, in New York asked me to go and talk about the movie in the context of Buddhists fire gods or something and I said yeah sure I was really psyched to be asked sure. and, then, and then I went out for dinner the night before and I sort of forgot and the kids were up early and I and I was having lunch with my friend and I just sort of thought oh I'll think about it later and then of course it came and I had to turn up and give this talk and I hadn't <laughs> thought at all about it and, and 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 it was terrible I mean it didn't go well at all obviously because it's something you need to put a bit of thought into um, but uh, that was a moment where I stood up on the stage and looked. And the other thing was I thought they were going to be sort of old grannies and they would just be sort of on an afternoon out at this museum and it wouldn't be that frightening of an right. audience. And it was these hipsters, like hundreds of them, really cool looking, <laughs> intimidating hipsters just waiting for me to say something interesting. And I, <laughs> it was terrible. It was the most awful moment, but I did sort of get through it somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what about you? I mean, like, because your character in the film is thrown into being a spy. I tell you the it's odd been... thing about it her story is that same thing happened to me. <laughs> For some, it must have been that year the Buddhists wanted people to come back, right. I guess. I don't know, but I did the same thing. In Georgia. How'd you do? Did you better in than Georgia, she... which was even stranger. Were you brilliant? Oh, it was unbelievable. <laughs> but see, I studied, unlike you. I got the Buddhist books and did the whole deal, you know. Shed a little tummy. I did fine. <laughs> no, you know, I got, uh, you know, I would equate it more with like stand up when you do stuff, like when you do some interviews and stuff. I just recently just promoting the show. Um, I was on Fox Sport, or uh, can I say, well, yeah, can I say? I'm, I'm actually Fox. It's okay, all right. There you go. I was on Fox it Sports works. in New York City, and they really set me down, and they go, Live on the air, they were doing the interview and it was all well and good. And then with a minute and a half to go, they go, okay, there, real quick, we'd like to do a little thing with you. Um, but we're going to give you five NBA players. You tell us what their car would be. <laughs> so you want to be funny. Right, you know? right, right. And I'm like going, huh? <laughs> and so it turned out to be really funny. But in situations like that, for me as a comedian, when they'll just go, well, you have to be funny. Right. For Oof. two minutes. That's okay, terrible. here's the question. Boom, go. It's and you're, you're literally live in front of, you know, 38 million people. No. And you're a comedian. So if you say something that's not funny, oh, that guy stinks. I saw him <laughs> on Fox Sports. But they literally just whipped that question on me and I had to be funny. I was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> now, Have you ever not been? Yeah, you're always oh, yeah. funny, dude. <laughs> My wife will tell you. <laughs> Ader, I'm sticking by you the way you always stick by me. It's the American spy! He's getting away! Ah! Excuse me, leaking oil.
Sorry, ladies. 